Hi everyone, I'm Gordon. Hi, I'm Rick. And uh, today we're going to talk about viscosity in the cannabis industry. Um, so we're going to start off with uh, just the very basics, you know, what viscosity is, and then we'll move into why it's important for cannabis extracts and vaporizers, and finally run a couple of tests that you might typically do for your formulations. So before we start, uh, let's go over what viscosity is. So viscosity is the resistance of a material to flow. So the higher the viscosity, the more solid it is, and conversely, the lower the viscosity, the more it will flow. And so you know this intuitively by by looking by comparing milk, for example, with honey. You know, honey has a much higher viscosity because it resists flow much better. Viscosity of honey is typically around 10,000 centipoint, whereas milk flows much more easily, and the viscosity of milk is around between five and 10 centipoint. The factors uh, that change viscosity the most um, are heat or concentration. So the more stuff that you're actually packing into your formulation will contribute to a higher viscosity. Likewise, if you lower the temperature, the viscosity will increase. And if you raise the temperature, material will flow or become more liquid-like. So companies that make vaporizer pods are starting to provide a uh, compatible viscosity range along with the device. Um, some of the ones that we have seen have been really wide and kind of all over the place. Um, so most, most customers find that they need to set the limits themselves or do experiments to figure out what's best for the device that they're using. And it is very dependent on device. There, uh, certain devices only work within a very narrow range, whereas other devices have um, a range that may be a little bit wider. So you really have to formulate your, your extract to match your device in order for it to work properly. And so how do you do that? Let's say you have a some raw material and you have a and you've you've been given a range by the manufacturer that's that's quite wide and it doesn't quite match up with your with your hardware. So what do you do? Well, first thing you do is you actually have to test your, your material. Find out what the exact viscosity is. And so let's say you do the test and you find that the the viscosity is much higher than what is compatible with your with your hardware. And so what do you do then? Um, well, one of the best options is to uh, dilute your material with uh, a substance called uh, terpenes, which is very common in the cannabis industry, and that's the easiest way to modulate your viscosity. The other things that you need to test are the, um, the ranges, the temperature ranges and conditions in which people will be using your products. Um, one of the things is that if the material that you're testing your formulation is too low in viscosity, it can either leak out of the device or flood the coil and, uh, and burn out the heating coil. And conversely, if it's too viscous and too thick, uh, it can clog the, uh, the device and then consumers aren't able to use all the material. Um, so that can be frustrating as well. Um, so it's, it's good to tune your viscosity using those terpenes and hit that target that you're after. Yeah, so some things that we've seen from our, our partners is um, what is the temperature that the customer will be using it at? For example, will they be in a hot climate? And so you would need to adjust your formulation to work in that climate. Will they be in a colder climate? So again, you need to adjust your formulation to the specifics of your market. And you do that through viscosity testing. So now we'll go ahead and run some samples and start off with, you know, what a typical uh, scenario might be where you have just extracted uh, some cannabis oil and usually when it comes out it's very viscous. Um, so we'll measure that and we will, uh, you know, measure a mixture of that with terpenes and hopefully get that within a, um, a range that seems reasonable for a device. Sounds good. All right, everyone. So this is our microvisc unit, and we'll be testing the um, raw extract of, uh, of THC as well as a blend, and then also the uh, the terpene that we would use to dilute them down. Um, so to start off with, this is our uh, starting extract, and we'll go ahead and determine what the viscosity of that is. Load it in. Just hit run. And we'll wait for that uh, plunger to move along and uh, test the sample. So 
So one thing to keep in mind as well is that um, you know when you're testing these, it's good to do ambient uh, room temperature measurements. But um, you know, as we mentioned before, that when you're testing for different conditions, for instance, you know somebody throwing a, a pen device in their pocket and walking around all day, the temperature could elevate. Um, so we also have a, a temperature controller for this device as well to measure up to 40 degrees C, and oh. 50 degrees C. <laughs> um, and then some of our other instruments, if you're looking at um, extraction or filling at even higher temperatures, we can get up to over 100 degrees C on one of our instruments. That's particularly useful if you're trying to get this material to flow or to fill these devices uh, during the manufacturing process. So now it's just uh, priming the chip pushing a little bit of the sample through to fill the flow cell completely. And we're just gonna wait for that to happen and then the test should be over in a few seconds. So while we're waiting for this, uh, what's going on is a small volume of the, of the cannabis oil is entering the flow channel and the software is determining the proper shear rates and flow rates to test, to test the viscosity. You can also specify uh, which shear rates you would like to use if there's a particular, for instance, rate of pumping or you know, fill rate that you're looking at uh, for your manufacturing process. But this is a really good way to just get you know, that accurate, or the, uh, your, your average viscosity measurement. It's a really quick and easy way to do it. Um, it's great for QC testing as well after manufacturing processes are done and you want to make sure the viscosity is what you want it to be. You can do this quick test right on the floor of your, of your lab. So as we mentioned before, this is a very viscous sample and usually with those higher viscosity samples, testing will take a little bit longer just because it takes more um, time to push that sample through the chip. Um, but we'll get a measurement here very quickly. Also, very little sample is used to do the testing. So right now we are only using, we're using less than 10 microliters at the moment. And it keeps a tally as you're testing of, of what, you're, um, what you're consuming for the test and as well as the, um, the viscosity in real time. So there we go. We got a uh, viscosity of around 74,000 centipoise. Yeah, and we have an exact exact temperature of 21.88 degrees. So let's just say that that is far too high for our uh, device that we're looking into, uh, into testing. One of the options is that we can take a, um, a terpene sample, which we have an example of that here, and we'll test that in a moment. Um, but we can mix that with this existing extract and get a blend. And I'll wait for the, uh, the pusher block to move all the way. And so terpenes tend to be uh, much lower in viscosity than the raw material. And so it's, it's, it's critical to know and understand the viscosity of your beginning um, samples so that you can really dial in that formulation. This takes the guesswork out of how you you make your your products and that also means that you know as you're testing these viscosities at different temperatures and um, and really figuring out what works for your devices and what doesn't that um, you'll have less returns of your devices you'll have more happy customers that kind of thing So this will start to pick up speed as it's pushing out that um, more viscous uh, raw extract that we were measuring before. But that's one of the nice things about you know measuring oils on this instrument is that there's no cleaning required in between samples. You just have to push out the last sample um, and make sure that it's primed with your new sample that you're testing. And if anyone out there has used a rotational type of viscometer, 
spindle based you know how difficult it is to clean very viscous samples and the beauty of our system is that like what gordon said you don't actually have to clean in between samples all right so there we got starting measurement all right so this blend came out much lower than the raw material this one is only 783 centipoi as compared to was it over 70,000 exactly. for the raw material. And so you can see how using terpenes can drastically alter the viscosity of your, of your cannabis oil. And as you were doing this experiment, if you keep track of how much terpene you have to add to get it within the target viscosity, you can then take that and scale that up to your entire manufacturing process. But one thing to keep in mind is that um, you know every raw extract that comes out is going to be slightly different in viscosity from the next batch. Um, so that's important to you know run this test each time and, um, and make sure that you're hitting those targets. So we have our uh, terpene sample that we're going to measure now and we had to switch out our chip to a um, one that handles lower viscosities because this will be outside of the range that that other chip handles. But we'll go ahead and measure it real quick. All right, so for our terpenes, we get a viscosity of around 32 centipoids. Um, so you can see that 32 compared to the uh, 74,000 we were getting before, this is a great way to lower that viscosity and get it within the range that we want. And um, the other plus side is the terpenes are a lot cheaper than cannabis oil. So it's a good way to, uh, you know, it's a good additive to use in that, in that formulation. All right, so uh, just to review, uh, viscosity is the resistance to flow and uh, it's relevant to vaporizer pods where too high a viscosity will mean that your vaporizer pod can clog and too low of a viscosity means that it can either burn the heating coil out or leak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so after you've established the, the range that you can operate at, you could very systematically um, keep track of the data that you're producing. So there's no more guesswork involved. Um, this can be also very uh, relevant to how um, the industry is evolving. Uh, just recently, the FDA approved the cannabis-derived uh, therapy for, for seizures. And so once the FDA is involved with um, the industry, then you'll need to be able to keep these very detailed uh, records, uh, the data that you have to prove your um, to prove what you are claiming. So again, stepping up to the scientific instrumentation that you'll need, uh, viscosity is something that you will be required to, to have in order to pass whatever regulations are coming down the line. Not to mention for manufacturing process, once you, you know, do your mixture on a small scale, figure out your formulation, then you can apply that to your um, large batches and your overall manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. Um, so with that, uh, our next cannabis episode, we will dive a little bit deeper into lot to lot variability mm -hmm. and brand to brand variability as well. We're going to test some, um, you know, we're going to go out and buy some oils and test different things and see just kind of what the viscosity ranges are out there on the market as it is right now. Right. Yeah. So we'll keep you posted and, uh, hope you guys, uh, tune in for the next, uh, Rick and Gordy episode. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Bye.